Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Motorcycle. New series, new episode, and now I'm heading towards the airport. I have to rush. Let you know, guys. Just as we are moving forward, the road will open and I will tell you where I am going and what I am doing. So, see you guys soon. Almost reached the airport, and uh, yeah. See, basically, what has happened is, for a few days, I have a Monday vlog. वो ट्यूसडे वेडनेसडे ऐसे ही डाल दिया क्योंकि माय मॉम ऑन संडे इवनिंग शी गोट अ कार्डिया करेस्ट विच हार्ट अटैक हुआ था हाँ वो शी इज़ फाइन नाउ एंड नाउ आई एम हेडिंग टू गोवा फॉर बाइलेंट फील फ्राइडे मेनिया लाइटिंग्स बहुत गंदी हैं आई विल सी यू गाइस मंच आई गो एंड गेट इन टू द एप Hey guys, welcome back. So, as you all know that I'm in Goa. I'm at the Royal Enfield Cafe, Enfield Cafe Goa. और यहाँ पे इतना सारी इतनी सारी गाड़ियाँ हैं ना पूछो मत. See, if you guys don't know, I started my career with Royal Enfields, building them, then racing them, then traveling with them till 2014. After that, Maya came in my life, and that's how you guys know me with Maya. But this was a short brief about my past. So I have raced Royal Enfields for 10 years, Ryder Mania maybe, or Bossari Jagar maybe. And I have traveled with Royal Enfields for a long time. Ma, is topic you per baat karne ke liye kabi aur, par abhi chalte hain action ki taraf. The most awaited motorcycle, the twins, are here at last. So we are over here, invited by Royal Enfield. So we are covering up the launch and at the same time we are going to get a ride. Sit back, relax and let's have some fun. Thoda, B-roll ho jai. Over the next hour, we're going to take you through the development process of these two bikes. And it's uh, my privilege to begin that by telling you about the history, the heritage of the two machines. My name's Gordon May, and I'm Royal Enfield's historian. And we're going to begin with this beauty here, which is an Interceptor. This one's from 1964, but the Interceptor wasn't by any means Royal Enfield's first parallel twin. That came in 1948 with the 500 twin, which is otherwise known as the twin with no name, because that's what they called it, the 500 twin. In 1948, when it was released, hand in hand with the 350 bullet, it had the revolutionary swinging arm rear suspension. So this was the first British motorcycle to have swinging arm suspension. So the 500 Twin wasn't a sporty bike, it was a general purpose machine. It was very smooth, uh, it was great for touring, great for commuting. But in 1953, that evolved into a 700cc version called the Meteor. And at that time, that was Britain's largest capacity parallel twin. 1956, in the pursuit of more power, the 40 brake horsepower Super Meteor which could top 100 miles an hour. That was Royal Enfield's first 100 mile an hour motorcycle. 1958, they took it a stage further. 51 brake horsepower, 110 miles an hour, a road burner called the Constellation. And it was out of the Constellation that the Interceptor came into being. First of all, they stripped down and tuned some Constellations and shipped them over to America to take part in desert races and they were called 
interceptors, but they weren't a, a 750 or 736 as this one. They were just a Constellation 700 engine. The cycling centered around cafes. And uh, young motorcyclists would meet in these cafes throughout the week, go for burn-ups, and at weekends would go for long rides together to the coast. And increasingly, they wanted a bike that emulated the machines of their racing heroes. But those bikes weren't available off the production line, and the, the average motorcyclist had no way of getting a racer. So they began to strip down their motorcycles, to tune them, to bolt on what few accessories were available, to make them into bikes that looked like their heroes' racing machines. And they became the first cafe racers. Very quickly we move into clay, so behind you is an example of clay models, as I say, it's, um, it's taken a hammering from the heat and, and, and also people, because it's a clay model, and everyone wants to see it's a clay model, so they stick the finger in it, so unfortunately it's covering little finger marks now, having been out because it's very soft. So the idea of clay is that at um, room temperature, it's quite hard and you can carve it and it will take a shape. If you heat it up to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes mould, and then you can effectively smear it onto a substrate so we have a, a foam armature underneath it and you can and then you can hand carve it and the reason that we work like that in that's a very artisan manner is because fundamentally you, you have to interact with a motorcycle you can't do it all virtually you can't do it in CAD because you you hug a motorcycle it's quite an intimate product if you think about it define how we want the motorcycle to be how, how we want it to look how we want it to behave and it's product development's job to take that and make it real uh, as Marks, I think, hope explained that during that the um, clay development stage, there's a lot of interchange between the engineers and the industrial designers to make sure that what we end up with there is feasible. There's still some work to be done, but it, we think it's going to work. Um, on that note, I'm going to have to walk outside. I'm afraid. Excuse the hat. I'm a little bit delicate in the sun. <laughs> analysis. You know, we're doing all a lot of work in the digital world. Uh, to make sure that what we come up with is going to work. So here's the frame that underlies it all. It's one of the most important components on the chassis side. Yeah. By chassis I mean not engines, everything else. Yeah. And by the time we get to that stage, we've worked out the basic structure. We've used finite element analysis to make sure it's going to be strong enough, it's going to be durable enough, it's going to be stiff enough. But then to go to complete the picture, to work out how it's going to behave, we can't analyse that. It's a very complex matter. So how a bike handles is the interaction between the frame with its different stiffnesses, the suspension, the wheels, the tyres, especially because that's how the motorcycle connects to the road, and also the rider. Okay, after listening about the engine, the way the frame was made and the history of Interceptor and GT, which one should I choose? GT and Interceptor share the same engine and the same frame. Yeah, footpeg posture and the handlebars are totally different. Uh, so seating posture is a bit different. So uh, I'll go with the Interceptor. Goa 03AJ4033. Three is my lucky number. So let's go on this. पहले से यहाँ से निकलते हैं। Feels really good, maneuverability wise. Sounds amazing. And uh, balancing. She feels good and amazing. So let's see what can we do next. So let's gear up and uh, और stand डालने से गाड़ी रुक जाती है। So here we are. Yeah, yeah, I'm here till 19. So what? Here are. For sure. 
So here we are with Torfi Traveler and Arda Motorcycle collabing together. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm riding a Interceptor and a toll free riding GT. If you have not watched this content, please go and watch this content. One of the best and amazing traveling expeditions or stories he makes and what editing dude. So, we are riding it together to see how a Interceptor, which was one of, like you saw in the history, is one of the desert riding bikes and the Continental GT which was originated for riding from one cafe to another to have fun Cafe racers yo! Yeah! Cafe racers versus We need to take a turn Let's go downhill You got a toll? <laughs> a certain somebody brought me down a certain road <laughs> which apparently has stairs at the end of it. Yeah. So uh, Do you think she can do it? Yeah. <laughs> Even but, if she does it, we're not putting it on camera. <laughs> uh actually. <laughs> but this is fun, right? Well, damn cool. I mean it's going to be a bit of a process to try and get ourselves out of here. Uh see if you go down when you find a wider space, you can take a turn and again you have to come up. Yeah. No, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Yeah. So Do you want to go? But down the stairs. Yeah, you want to go back. I don't know. Whatever you say. Will we have enough ground to go down the stairs? We don't have some cards also. Yeah. So, let's not take, take a risk. Yeah. Let's get our own bikes and try it out once. Yes. Okay? This is not a smart position. Yeah. So. Switch off the ignition. Oh, uh, I think the light is hitting from behind. <laughs> no, 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 the light already, the sun reflection is hitting. Okay, chalo. This has to be... No, it's easy. Take a turn a bit. Ah, go straight. Go, go, go this way. Turn up? Yeah. Put it on the side stand. Leave it. Get down. Let me get my baby now. I love to <laughs> it's fun dude Let's go up So here we are Riding the Interceptor And the GT On basic off-road Let's see How do they behave In this kind of scenario Obviously Interceptor will be way better than the GT 
but uh, let's see. This is my all time favorite spot for sunset and uh, a place where we can sit and talk, spend some time and uh, yeah, let's have a brief talk with Toll Free Traveler about what he feels with the GT. This is the place where I used to spend my mo majority of time over here or over there. Ah, see you guys in a bit. Hi guys, rode this baby and uh, seriously I don't want to talk about the speed, technicality or CC or what BHP it outputs. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to see that as a rider, whatever I demand from a motorcycle, will it support me? So, you guys have seen what and all I have done with her. So, okay, for a 650cc interceptor retro motorcycle, which had a, a what do you say, genetics of riding on deserts and uh, doing a lot of off-road thingy so it goes really well she has done whatever I asked her to do so 3.8 lakhs or 3.85 lakhs is worth you can seriously enjoy with this motorcycle your daily commutes or some weekends on the highway she is a good to go by. This is the time what I had got with this beautiful baby and uh, yeah it's, it's fun it's the sweetest bike this is the word which I can use for this particular motorcycle this is not underpowered or overpowered for the thing whatever they have given and uh, it's a bike if you want to purchase a motorcycle just for everyday commute to riding uh, taking a time off and riding out this is the bike to buy boys so here I'm concluding this particular episode of riding the twins <laughs> <laughs> 